live stream. So hello, my pride and joy. And I want to thank Austin for being here today. Austin has a book out called Flashpoint. He also has some websites and I put all that information in, in the um, description area. So how are you doing today, Austin? I'm doing fantastic. I'm feeling great. I just returned from Phoenix, Arizona yesterday. Oh, wow. Change in weather. Change in weather, change in vibe. Yeah. It's, although the weather is not too different. We're a little bit cooler here, but we, we had, I'm in the Northeast. I'm right outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we had, when I was away in Phoenix, it was like in the nineties here, like sweltering hot. And I was, <laughs> here I was in Phoenix where it was about the same temperature, but it was, it felt better in Phoenix, obviously, because it's a different kind of heat. It's a dry heat. <laughs> it's not that a dry humidity. heat, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what everybody says down there yeah yeah oh so how did it go down in phoenix it was fantastic i i was th there i was attending the light of the world retreat hosted by eckhart tolle and his wife kim eng i'm not sure if anybody's familiar with that but that's uh eckhart's the author of the book the power of now a new earth transformational work that he's brought to the world over the past 20 plus years, more than that. No, what am I saying? 20, yeah, 20, 20 plus. Yeah, that's true. 20 plus years. And it was great to be there to really just sharpen my ability and to, to help others in their journey. And when you can learn from somebody like him, it just adds a whole nother dimension and element to people's journey. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to have people like that in our lives. That's something we should seek for is to always find somebody like that. It's wonderful. Wonderful. So uh, tell our audience a little bit about the book that you've written, Flashpoint, how you came up with the name and kind of what was behind the scenes. Thank you for that. And it's an honor to be on your show today. Alex. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's great to, thanks for having me. And I'm really honored to be here with you. i I've written two books, but the, the first two books were compilation books. And this was the first book I have it here. It's called Flashpoint. It was your turnaround story starts here. This was the, oh. the beginning. And prior to this, Flashpoint was this, I call it a divine download. I started to ask myself as I, I had resigned from, my, I was with a company for 19 years. I, I was doing very well for myself. I was in the middle of my best year, but I had, I just had this, this purpose inside this calling lots of pain early on of dealing with lack of self-worth and that, that voice in my head that was always just there telling me limit, limiting me, you know, sometimes it was known, sometimes it was unknown, but, but through that, I was able to, to do well corporately. I had a big breakthrough and I'll, I'll talk about that. But the idea came when I said, there's, there's a moment when, when, and when it makes sense, there's a moment of clarification and validation when we know unequivocally that everything we were working on the journey, it all comes to a, a moment where we go, ah, oh, and, and it, it makes sense. And that's where this started. And I thought, what if we could manifest that? What if we could be intentional? What if we could create this in our lives. And I said, you know, that was, that was, that's a flashpoint moment. And I've been building the work, developing it. And this, uh, this book, we did, we did another book on, it's a part of the flashpoint series called the health turnaround. And this was another thing that is really about people's health and vitality is crucial to their, the life journey, the flashpoint journey, their, their own personal journey, relationships even. So we had that book done. And now the third book, I'm working on two books this year. One of them is called Flashpoint. This is my first solo book, Manifesting the Moment of Your Big Breakthrough. And I'll pause for a moment before we get into the rest of the story, because I, I know I've just shared a lot about the, the journey so far. So what's the difference between this book that you're doing now and the first book that you did? Thank you. Really good question, Alas. I appreciate that. This book was a compilation of stories. Okay. And the reason why I decided to do that is because I felt like, yes, concepts are important, 
As a matter of fact, the how-to industry is booming. People want how-to, and that makes sense. But what I reasoned and I understood from really my story, it's the stories of other people that became the genesis of my transformation. It wasn't the concepts. It was the stories where my belief level started to shift because I saw in others what I sought to create in myself. So I thought, let's create, let's do the stories first and then build from there. And that's why I elected to, to do the stories first. Yeah. I love that. I love it. That's, you know, I've been thinking back over my life. You know, I just talk to anybody, anytime. I don't know why I just do. <laughs> and, you know, talking to someone sitting on an airplane, if they want to talk, they'll talk. If they don't, they'll pick up their book and read, and that's fine too. But the stories they tell you about their lives, uh, you know, a young man was on a journey to go see his girlfriend and, and they met each other. They'd seen each other. She moved to go to different work. And just the process that went on through that and how he was encouraged by her. So he went to pursue his dream. And now they were going to come together again. And or the, you know, the gentleman in the parking lot who, who came up to me and my mom and had this card in his hand. And, and he was an older gentleman. He goes, do you mind if I just tell you about my wife? And you're like, okay. But his wife had passed away, but he loved her so much. Mm. He wanted to tell her story to anybody who would listen. I mean, it was just beautiful. And at the time, I wasn't writing books or anything. I, I wish I would have been because I would have loved to written that story down. I know there was so much more. And he just had a little poem on a card with his wife's name and, and just handed that to people. You know, nothing really invasive, nothing that hurt anybody. He just wanted to share something that was special to him. Beautiful. And I think it's important for everyone to share their story. You know, everybody has something that's that's inside of them that brings value to everybody else. And there's nothing wrong with sharing a story. It's true. I, uh, I agree with you so much what you said. And even though it can be challenging to share stories, it's, I always say I jokingly but really say you have you have to get over yourself <laughs> yeah because we think about oh what are people going to think and oh uh, can I share that and oh, I don't want to want to protect myself and it's interesting that as I reflect on these stories there's personal growth involved to get to the point to share your story yes it's that getting over it's that it's, it's an act of courage. It really is an act of courage for a gr the collective greater good that it's, you're, it's, it's kind of a paradox because some people do these books and they think it's about them. And it's really, you're contributing your story as a, as a pointer, as a guide that someone else is going to pick up yeah. and they're going to go, Oh, you know, and we, and we, I've already had, I've already had people that have gotten a hold of these stories at dark nights of the soul and they were like transformed, grateful that they had the story in those, in that book, in this book. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I'm anxious to hear your story because now you've, you've put everybody else's together. Now you've got the courage or the hope to put your story down to help others. You know, um, I was yeah. talking with, in one of my groups last night that um, hope is, it takes courage to have hope. It takes, um, you, know, you know, just to give somebody hope, you, you actually give a part of yourself, but it's something good that you're getting. Um, I'm giving a talk on value. And one of the things that came to me while I'm writing it is you never run out of value. No matter how much you give to somebody else, you're just going to keep getting more and more into yourself. You never run out. So you're always valuable, you know, yeah. and yeah. I'll let you talk. This is your show, not mine. <laughs> oh, no, I, 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 this is an interaction. It's the interaction that creates the, <laughs> it's the interaction between us that creates the value. It's not, a, not just a monologue. Uh, one of the things that quote that I love is um, what you, what you give away, you keep forever. What you keep, 
you lose forever. Yeah. And it's like this with our story. And you may say, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, when you share your story and it, and it, like we did and we put it in book form, it's, it's produced. It's like, it's forever there. It, it's beyond me. It's about the person that picks it up. Yep. It's not about me anymore. Yeah. My name's on the cover for, you know, for marketing and business and all that kind of stuff, branding, but it's the person that reads the story and now it's in, and now it's in them. And then it goes on into perpetuity. Whereas if we never told these stories, they're lost. They people are. die. People move. People forget. Yeah. It's how important it is, you know, to, to share the story. It is. It's really important. And it's, and it's just touching that one person's life. And then that person, you know, carries that on to somebody else who maybe will touch a thousand lives. I mean, you just never know what's yeah. going to happen to your story once it's out there. But it's all good that's happening to your story. You know, yeah. it's it's. Yeah. And my story, uh, part, part of my stories in this book, part of my part of my stories in both books. But uh, if you want to make and share a little bit about if you'd like. Definitely. Yeah. I so I, I won't go. I'll, I'll try to give the Reader's Digest version here, but. Okay. You know, we, we all have obstacles and, and things that happen in our lives. And it's really, and I, I say, I uh, just had a conversation yesterday that whatever pain you're in, you've gone through, however deep loss, grief, you know, people died, uh, you made a mistake. Uh, uh, it, in some way, what the paradox is, that's your path it ends up being a gift, but the, the mind, when you're in that, we can be lost, you ever hear the term like stuck in a moment. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't realize this is the paradox of life, that that is your gift, your starting point, and your mission to transmute that into some opposite. Now, in the case when someone dies, you can't bring somebody back to life. But in the case of this man with his wife, her legacy now is being spread through him sharing her about her and him sharing. So, and think about the, 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 the love and connection he's getting from sharing that story. He's meeting people he may not have never met. So there's, there is some kind of opposite to the pain and our, our ability. And what I want to do with this, with my book is to bring more conscious awareness to it so people can ride it and create that transmutation or transformation from a more conscious place. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I came from a broken home, parents got divorced, and I just had this belief that something was wrong, something was wrong with me. And that was my, my starting point. That's where I was coming from, that everybody was up here and I was down here. So it didn't matter what happened, I was always detracting myself, devaluing myself to stay in line with this limited thought form that I had created in my mind. And then I had these peaks and valleys and I always had potential people thought, Hey, that, you know, people never knew that was underneath the surface. And it always at that time say always, it prevented me from reaching my full potential. And then it, it culminated into a point where I made a bad mistake. And I, I, I said, my life is over. Hmm. And as I, as I look back and I think about it, like, it wasn't so much that I said the words, it was that I believed it, you know, I, I, like my life was over as far as I was concerned, I couldn't see beyond it. And my, my uh, thank God, my dad, uh, my dad was a Vietnam vet and, um, you know, that's why you, you don't get the parents you want, you get the parents you need. I love and, uh, my, my dad said, <laughs> he said, your life is not over. Cause my dad had been in a war and I found out later that my dad had a man die in his arms. I never knew it. And he was never the same again. And here's his son going through this, you know, tragedy and thinking life is over. My dad said, your life is not over. And he was right. Oh. And, uh, that was like a, a major catalyst of pain uh, that 
didn't happen overnight. It took me a while to, to cultivate the awareness necessary to get to this point where I'm not, where I am now and uh, to, to create, you know, flashpoint or whatever. That's the words word I'm using for it, you know, but a good word. That, that's the journey. And, and to say that, you know, I, I move, I move forward from there and I, I did turn things around. Uh, I, I got, I was, um, at a corporate job. I, I got really lucky, got hired. And uh, within the first year, they were going to fire me. And then, so now my, all this lack and <laughs> kicking up again, you know, if you don't turn things around, we're, we're going to fire you. And then I had a, uh, pain that, 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 so I had this, this pain, you know, kind of came with me, right. The, the, the broken childhood, the tragedy, low self-esteem. It wasn't like an overnight thing. Some people it's overnight. And now I'm here and I'm about to get fired. I'm like, see, you know, see, you're not good enough, you know, but then what happened was to the, the sitting with this pain, kind of all this pain in my life culminating into this moment and then realizing, wait, this embracing it, something clicked in my mind. And that was a, that was a turning point. I call it like a flicker flash, you know, like a, 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 a flash of light comes in and, uh, and then shortly after that, I, I had an in, internal flashpoint. Like I got chills right now. Like every cell, I say your internal flashpoint, every cell in your body vibrates at a high level. You're like, something's happening here. And, you're, and, and you can't even fully put it into words. And uh, from there, that, I, I ended up, that, that, was created, that created a breakthrough where I was with that company for 19 years. I became uh, the top rep in the company in my category. And just had this success journey and then um fast forward i ended up like as i mentioned resigning and to, to, i said because i had more work to do there was a calling inside of me and i needed all of that stuff that happened to me was for me to do what i'm doing now and and, and that's a, a great message where because everybody we're all on that journey we're all on this flashpoint or whatever you want to call it but having the awareness to know where am i mm -hmm. And, and to be, maybe you need to be present with some emotions that you've been carrying along with you. Maybe you've been stuffing them under the rug and you're, you're not allowing them to come in. At the same time, you're blocking your future. You're blocking, you know, the gifts you're supposed to bring to this life and this world. So that was, that's my journey. And that's what really what's going to be a big part of this book. Lots of concepts in it, but, you know, it all comes down to the individual's journey. It's, it's for you to find your path inside of these concepts it's not for you to follow my path necessarily we're going to give we give some concepts some ideas and, and some things that are going to help you but it, it's really a pointer to to embrace your journey so i'm blessed to be here with you i you know i value every interaction because like when i'm on these types of shows i don't just say oh i'm on with ls today i'm like i think about every all the things that happen the decisions quitting my job after 19 years and, and now I'm here and I, had I not one decision different, I'm not on, I'm not on this with you. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that's how valuable That's me it starting is. this too. Sorry. It was me starting this too. If I would have made the decision to do that, I wouldn't meet these amazing people or be able to share you with the rest of the world, you know, whoever views them or audience or on replays later on YouTube and, and all of you have something amazing to share to that people can grab a hold of and use in their own lives and and keep that hope in front of them i mean it's it's even just a little bit of hope just makes the biggest difference absolutely yeah wow oh that's incredible i can hardly wait for your book to come out i have to go get the others now um you had a third book we haven't really talked about it what was it? the second book that oh it, let me get some clarity on that. The, th okay. the third book, <laughs> yeah, the third book is like the concept book. It's got my story in it and it's got the, the concepts that we're talking about here. And it's, these concepts have been around for thousands of years. Uh, it's just, we're, you know, etymology, the, the study, you know, the words evolve over time and the way we under, we evolve as a human species over time and the way we understand things evolve. So I trust the way I put this together is going to really resonate in a unique way that's going to reach people. And so that book is called Flashpoint, Manifesting the Moment of Your Big Breakthrough. 
Okay. And the second book is a more of a case study. Oh. And so I'll give you just a, a quick example. The chapter that I just completed, because I'm more, I, I, most of book one is done. We, we don't have a release date yet, but that's mo a lot of that content is written. Book number two, I just started because I wrote about Eckhart Tolle. So mm -hmm. what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking people that I under, that I've studied, that I know about, and I'm writing their flashpoint stories. So I, I basically, and my, my intention is to write the chapter on location. So I wrote his chapter while I was attending that retreat. And I actually, the tail end of it. So I completed that chapter because I, I want to harness the whatever, like, so instead of me just going to research, I wanted to be kind of in the space, you know, in the energy of the, the emotions and the, and the feeling of what was happening and, and the location. I mean, you know, at the Arizona Biltmore and uh, that's a Waldorf Astoria resort. So I wrote the chapter there. And so that's going to be the second book where, so people, again, it's going back to the stories. People can go, okay, how's this all work? And then here's the stories, you know, that, that where this journey is depicted. Nice. Nice. So where are some of the other places you're going to go to, to write the chapters? Well, Give us kind of an inside preview. <laughs> yeah. Well, th that's still developing, but I'll give you, um, some of them I have to really dig because there's, there's like, I'm going to be writing about Maya Angelou, uh, but I'm also going to be writing about like the John D Rockefeller, who's still a controversial figure today. So I'll be writing that one. There's two locations. Uh, there's the Rockefeller estate and there's another location, which I'm not going <laughs> to delve out here because it's kind of a interesting, it's an amazing story. Uh, Thomas Edison, I'm a big fan of the, 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 that Edison light bulb. So there, that's up in Menlo Park where his, his big workshop was. So I will be uh, writing those chapters while I'm still on the East Coast. Um, and then uh, the, who else? Um, who else am I writing about? I got, I got a list of people and I'm still curating the list. Oh, of wow. People. And so what started out as maybe like 15 people, I might even make it more like 30 or, or 50. Oh, you know, so I'm really going to like, I'm really going to put a lot of people in this book and, uh, with these stories and, and to say, here's their flashpoint moment. Here's what happened. You know, that's pretty cool. Wow. That's, I can't even imagine undertaking something like that. That's, that's just amazing. Well, you know, it's, you can't think about the road too much. Like I, I just knew, okay. And this is what we, we train people. What's your next logical step? Well, I was going to the Eckhart Tolle. And I'm like, okay, write the chapter. I'm, you know, I mean, don't, don't think about, uh, you, of course you want to have a vision, but huh? if I get too like, oh my God, how am I going to do all this? And then I immobilize myself. <clears throat> but if I say I can write a sentence today, okay. If I can write one sentence in my journal, I'm in motion. There you go. <laughs> By that journaling, I, I just, the more I hear about the way people journal, the more I'm just, I wish I would have heard about this years ago. It was just, I had no idea what journaling was about. That's just amazing. Wow. So besides your books, um, what else do you do? Oh my goodness. <laughs> A lot. Loaded yeah. question. <laughs> I know. Well, I, you know, I, 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 I guess you can say I'm an ultra marathon runner. <laughs> I've done a couple <laughs> ultra marathons, which is uh, 50 kilometers or more, mm. about 32 miles. But I'm not really doing that as much right now. I do a lot of hiking. I'm, I'm a big advocate of nature, of getting people out in nature because we're around man-made materials all the time, you know, from the clothes we put on, the shoes, and very, very few people, when you look at the, the large of population, have a connection with nature. And if you think about it like a rhythm, you know, if you think about, you know, think about beautiful music. Like, mm -hmm. so if you think about what's a piece of beautiful, beautiful music for you, right? Do you have one? Oh, gosh, I'm, I've been a musician since third grade. 
Okay. So I love just about all kinds of music. I don't particularly care for elevator music, but okay. but in just about anything else, it's yeah, I'm right there. So so what what give me one piece of music. Um it could be classical, or whatever. Oh gosh. Well, let's do Beethoven's fifth. Okay. So Beethoven's fifth. So yeah, Beethoven's fifth. And that's the dun 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 dun, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. dun, 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 dun. There's just okay. so much in there. <laughs> And then you have a bunch of people that go into a room, they have no musical and they're banging on pots and pans. One guy's scratching the chalkboard, <laughs> right? So I know this is a, a weird metaphor, but what happens when we're too much in the man-made world of the stress and the chaos, it's like, it's like the chalkboard, the banging the pots and pans. When we go out into nature, it's Beethoven's fifth. Whew, we're just, we dial into the rhythm of life. It's synchronous, it's synchronicity. And too much of us are listening to the wrong music and we're wondering why we don't get, why we're stressed. We're watching the news. We're around man-made materials. We're not going out to the gift that's right in front of us and just dialing into it and yeah. allowing ourselves to just be, be it with nature. And so I really am a big advocate of that. Um, just, and I need, like, I'm not some expert. I just use it for myself. I, it's what I need. It's what I go to open spaces, trees, streams, birds. I need it almost every day in order to show up the way I show up. And I recommend people do the same thing in whatever way is comfortable for them. Cause some people don't like creepy crawlies. I get it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Go, go sit out on your back and put your feet in the grass. I mean, yeah. as simple as that. <laughs> it is. It doesn't take much. You know, even a simple thing as um, putting a bird feeder outside your window. I have a hummingbird feeder out my window. Uh, and I, love I don't know what there is about hummingbirds at the feeders. They're just, it just brings such a calmness just watching them. And, and sometimes if there's two and three, they get scrapping or whatever. And they can be quite entertaining, <laughs> but yeah, just something simple. You know, I definitely grew up country, I guess. You know, we were always going on camping trips, um, doing things outside, you know. It was just never being in town. And when I did live in town, um, it was hard, but I still found ways to see nature because there's trees somewhere. You see birds somewhere, uh, you know, there's just, yeah. there's activity. If you just stop for a few seconds and yes. just look at it, you yes. know, one of my favorite things to do when I'm in a big city <laughs> and, and I heard somebody else do this. So I tried it for the first time when I went to Seattle and I stood on the corner and I looked up and it really is amazing the the architecture that they have. They have some very old buildings like that. And it was just interesting because I'd watch out the corner of my eyes and see how many people would slow down, take a quick look and then keep going. Or they would they would keep walking, but they'd look up and then all of a sudden they have to, oh no, there's someone there, you know, to dodge. But just, you know, people watching is really great. I mean, people in nature, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just great. But yeah. just just taking a few minutes just to, to uh, feed yourself to give yourself value by giving yourself a chance to breathe, a chance just to keep your mind, um, let it relax a little bit because we have our minds going all the time. Now we're just inundated with so much stimuli and, and just taking a few seconds in any big city, looking at a tree, you know, ask somebody what kind of tree is this? And most people like, oh, I didn't even know the tree was there. You know, they're so busy True. and it's, True. it's uh, yeah, it's just interesting <laughs> being outside and doing stuff. And and I love it now with, with COVID, even though we still have COVID, it's still there. I don't think it's ever going to go away. But yeah. we're learning how to get outside and get back together with people and do things and not live in fear of, oh, no, you know, we're starting to understand it and what it is and, and deal with it. So it's a great time for people to start getting outside, especially with summer here on its way. That's just wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh I see. And 
gone over time again, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, I, I I will tell you, I just saw hummingbirds in in Phoenix. I saw saw them twice. I was like, it was neat. Oh, that's wonderful. That's yeah. wonderful. thank you so much, Austin, for coming in and and speaking with us, sharing your stories. And gosh, I'm I'm so excited for your books to come out. Um, so our thank you, our pride and joy for being here today. Be sure and check out his. Austin's website and check out his books and and do you My have them at Amazon? Under construction. Oh, is it'll it be, okay? It'll be done actually in the next week. It's AustinHaines.com. Uh, but oh, you cool. can go to your you can go to yourflashpoint.com. I have a free giveaway there. It's like nine questions to identify and remove limiting beliefs. It's yourflashpoint.com, okay. and then my main website will be done here soon. Awesome! Oh, that's exciting. All right. Okay. Well, thank you for coming and. You know, you when so your much. book is out, come back again and let's hear about it. And, and thank you so much talk for having about me. your adventures. Really All right. Thanks, thank Austin. You. Bye bye. Bye bye.